Northwestern head coach Chris Collins. We'll start with an opening statement and then take questions. Coach? Well, yeah, I mean, anytime you get a chance to get a win on the road in this league, it's big. You know, whoever you play, wherever you play, it's, um, you know, there's always such great support in this building. Um, you know, I feel for those injuries. I, I really do. I, I feel for Fred and, and his staff because, you know, I've had a chance to watch this Nebraska team play all year, and it's it's been my favorite, you know, Nebraska team to watch in, um, you know, in quite a while, you know, and, and having those two guys get hurt, you know, just so unfortunate. Uh, two guys that I really enjoyed watching play, and, and obviously I wish them, you know, the best with their recovery. Um, you know, I thought Nebraska came out with great energy. Um, Tomanyago was brilliant early. You know, we didn't do a very good job. We we gave him. When a guy is a terrific shooter, if you give him layups, it's uh, the basket can look really big. And we gave him two layups early on drives right away. And he, he really gave them a huge lift early. I think he had 15, you know, maybe in the first eight to 10 minutes of the game. Um, thought we did a pretty good job on Walker and Greasel. You know, we knew coming into the game, you know, in order for them to be at their best, those three guys, you know, were going to have to, you know, really pit, put up big numbers. I thought we did a good – Walker is a very difficult guy to defend because of, Fred does such a great job of getting him in places on the floor that it's hard to give a lot of help. You know, he's right in the middle of the floor. Um, thought we did a pretty good job with, with our help, with our doubles. We, we got him to turn the ball over five times, which uh, – and he only got seven points. So, you know, that was a huge key to the game coming in. Um, you know, they made a conscious effort to get the ball out of our guards' hands. Uh, which I thought they might do. Uh, they had shown that, you know, in some of their previous games. You know, they were double teaming a lot of our ball screens with Boo and Chase, and we really talked to our guys about being willing passers, you know, and, and understanding that if they were going to take the ball out of their hands, other guys were going to be open. And obviously, Ty, you know, was the main beneficiary of that. You know, he, the the twenty whatever one points he got in the first half were huge, and and he got a layup. Just it was like the it was like two guys. I, I thought they were playing horse out there. You know, Tomanyaga and Barry in the first half, and then our defense kind of settled in. We were able to have a, a you know a 16 to 20 minute stretch in the game where I thought we played really good defense, forced some turnovers, got out in transition. We were able to push the lead out and then uh, held on. You know, I I was real concerned. This was our second game in three days. You know, obviously we haven't practiced much since guys got sick and and we were out. And and so when you have a lead like that with five minutes to go, I could kind of sense our guys. You know, like hey, getting a little bit, you know, foot off the gas pedal. And when you do that in this league, all of a sudden people score on you and give them credit. I think they cut it to 14 there. And, and I thought Audij had two huge baskets. You know, he gets a tip dunk um, and then a back cut against the, their little one-three-one trapping zone they were doing for a layup, and, and we were able to bring it home. So, really, really proud of the guys. Really proud to be able to get you know two league wins in three days with traveling and. Um, you know, we got we're in the midst of a big stretch for us right now. We have six games in, in the in the next thirteen days. These two being one of them just to recoup some of the games we didn't get a chance to play. So we gotta get home and, and get a chance to get back at it on Saturday morning. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, no, I, I mean, I hoped, I prayed, I, I prayed very well today, this afternoon, that we would throw the ball in the basket because, you know, I, I had a sense the way our, our two guards had, have played and the way they played the other night against Wisconsin and, and knowing Fred kind of the way I do through the years and stuff, I, I, I knew that they were going to try to get the ball out of Bowie and Odisha's hands. And I knew it was going to be really important for Barry, Barron, Barnheiser, you know, Martinelli, the guys to, to be able to step up and kind of make shots. And, you know, it ended up being Ty was the guy. And I thought that really loosened things up. And and uh, I thought we shared it great, you know, out of their traps and double teams. I thought we moved it. We found the open guy. And, um, you know, it's, it was good. I told the guys, when you play the right way and the ball's moving like that, the shots seem to go in more because you're taking the right ones and, and the ball's kind of to find in, find in where it needs to go and you're taking good shots. So, you know, to make 11 threes, um, you know, I'll, I'll take that every night. I know that's not going to happen, but uh, certainly it was fun to see tonight. You saw specifically from your defense in that run where it was a 33-30 game there and then yeah. 60-37 about seven minutes into the second half. Defensively, what do you see out of your game? I just thought we got a little bit more physical with their cutting. 
you know, I mean, that was the main, you know, they, Fred does such a great job. I mean, he's such a, a brilliant offensive coach. Their spacing is so good. And then you have a passer and Walker, you know, at the big guy position when they're in that five out, they're constantly moving and back cutting and slipping cuts. And I thought we were more physical as the game. You know, that was a point of emphasis. If, if you don't get your body on those guys, they're going to get open because they cut quick. They, they have great spacing. I thought early in the game, their freedom of movement was they were kind of going wherever they wanted to go. And I just thought we got a little bit more physical uh, against their cutting, against their actions. And we were able to force some turnovers and get out in transition and get some baskets, which always helps too. Maybe on film, how different defensively is Nebraska without Emmanuel and Juwan Gary? Yeah, I mean, it's they're big losses. I mean, there's no question. I mean, one Emmanuel would have been on either Boo or Chase. He would have been picking them up full court. Um, his energy, I mean, I, I told Fred, I, I just feel sick for them. And, and they're going to keep fighting. You know, I told Walker and Great, like, they, this is a high-character team. I've really enjoyed I've been friends with Fred for a while, obviously coached the Bulls and kind of growing up in the NBA game, I've known him. So I, I always root for him, and, and I've watched this team, and I've really enjoyed what they've built with this team. And to see those two guys go down, you know, their grit, their toughness, you know, they they gave this team an edge, you know, maybe that you hadn't seen for a while since, you know, some of those Tim Miles teams when they had all those transfers and, and got really good. It kind of reminded me of those type of teams, you know, with Shields and, and Isaiah Roby and, and those guys and, and uh, the, you know, the Palmer and those guys. So, um, you know, I, I thought I think they have a very good team. Obviously, not having those two guys, uh, they're going to have to continue, whether it's with other stuff and find a way. But I know. I know Fred, I know he's going to keep fighting. And, and I really, Walker's one of my favorite players. Like, I just think his, he's, he's got a lot of heart. He's really led this team. And, and I'm sure they'll find a way to, to make K with what they got. And um, I didn't like Sam coming in and scoring eight points on me, though. I, I, uh, his son and I, he, he played against my son when he was a freshman in high school. And um, it's pretty funny. I'm watching him out there. I'm like, oh my God, I, I feel so old. I remember watching a freshman basketball game between New Trier and, and Hinsdale Central and watching you two knuckleheads play. And, and now you're out here back cutting and hitting threes on me. So uh, uh, anyway, it's, it's, it was a really good win tonight for us. We're, we're happy. We can obviously things we can clean up. But you in this league, if you win, you got to be happy no matter who, who you beat. Big Ten wins. What do you credit this turnaround you guys have made and success you found this year to? The leadership of the guys. You know, I mean, I, I always say that. You know, I mean, it, it's the players dictate what kind of team you're going to have. You know, it, it's fun as a coach where for me and my staff, really, I come in every day and, and all I'm worrying about is strategy. And that's when you know you have, you, you're not worried about having to meet with guys about attitudes or who's getting shots and who's not getting shots. I mean, you know, our, we have we have really good role allocation on this team. The guys know the ball is going to be in Boo and Chase's hands. They're two senior guards. Those guys have been through a lot. You know, we they have a little edge to them because you know I'm sure. I mean, we try to we we talk about eliminating the outside noise, but being picked last in the league and guys transfer like you know, there's a lot of negativity. And and we still felt we had good players in that locker room. And I think it's kind of really gal galvanized our group since the summer. Um, we're a real together group. We play really hard. Um, we have a lot of things that we don't do well at times, and, and, and we show it. But uh, the leadership of the three seniors, Robbie Barron, Boo Booey, and Chase Audige is the reason. You know, they let, they've led this team every day, and they've set the tone for how these guys have played and the other guys have followed them. They went on that 9-0 run about nine minutes left in the first half. You yeah. took that timeout. You guys ended the half out yeah. scoring them 21-5. to five. Yeah. What was the message in that? Start playing some defense. <laughs> you know, it's. Uh, I just thought they were getting what you know. They were just again the freedom of movement. We wanted to get more physical. You know, we just knew with this team, if you let them cut freely, they're going to get what they want. And they have shooters, and they have passing, and they cut well. And I just felt like they were in just such a rhythm offensively. You know, we were getting. You know, we were getting shots. I think it was twenty five, twenty two. We said, guys, we're, we're, we've scored twenty two points. But we're we're not we're not playing on that end of the floor. And I thought that last whatever ten minutes, eight minutes, that that stretch, you know, getting that thirteen point lead, I thought was the best basketball we played in the game, and kind of was the difference tonight. You guys did really well with the second chance points. What do you think? How do you think Matt Nicholson? Tonight? Yeah, I'm I'm super proud of Matt. I mean, Matt is a guy. Obviously, he's played behind two really good players the last couple of years, and Pete and Ryan. 
And, um, you know, he's just worked and gotten better, and he's kind of created his own niche, you know. And I told him, be you. You know, he's, he's a big, strong guy. He's a physical screener. He's big on the boards. He's a lob threat for us, you know. So when our guards in those pick-and-roll actions, he's, he's a guy who can go get it. And, um, and he's a terrific defender. I mean, he's a big reason why our defense has taken a, a step up this year. You know, his ability to, to man the paint, to be big. I mean, even if he doesn't block a shot, that size – I thought it altered a lot of shots around the basket with him down there. So he's getting more confident with each game, and which is nice. He's shooting his free throws a little bit better, which is good. And just really proud of him because in today's day and age, if a guy doesn't play for two years, usually he's out the door. You know, the grass is – and for Matt to stick with it, to understand he was in the right place, he needed to work hard, he needed to get better, he needed to get stronger, and now it's his time. And he's really flourishing, which I'm proud of. Thank you, guys. Be good. Thanks, guys.